I want to show you the top three melodic rock bass lines ever written, ever put on a recording. Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and if you want to see exactly how to make your own melodic bass lines, I'll show you exactly what makes these bass lines so melodic and so singable, so you can start making your own melodic bass lines as well. <laughs> Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it's all about insanely practical, no BS bass lessons you can use to play better bass, have more fun, become the best bassist that you know you can be. I'm really excited today because we're talking about some of my absolute favorite melodic rock bass lines. These are probably my top three, but I'm sure you have other melodic rock bass lines in mind. And if you do, put them in the comments below. I want to know what your favorite melodic rock bass lines as well. Now most people, or you might even think this, you might think of rock bass lines as being kind of more driving. That kind of thing, yeah? And that does happen a lot, uh, but there are some absolute gems of bass lines out there uh, that in some cases are more melodic than the actual melody of the song. So let's learn them and I'll show you exactly what's going, un going on underneath the hood that makes these bass lines so melodic. Then you can inject some of that own melody into your own bass lines, riffs, fills and everything else. The first bass line I want to show you is actually the very first bass line I ever learned. I remember it clearly. I was 16 over at my drummer's friend's house using his brother's bass and my other guitarist friend was showing me how to play this bass line. Then we all played it together. I I pretty much immediately fell in love with the bass. I can't think of a better song for me to have learned first. It's the Paul McCartney bass line from Come Together, and it looks like this. One, two, three, four. Yeah? You can also play it like this. That's actually how I learned it originally. Uh, you could also just play the open D string. Yeah, those are all great, but I, I like this one. Yeah, because it lets you do that big slide up to the A there, uh, and it also lets you do a big slide down from the D. Ah, and by the way, if you're looking for tabs and notation for all the songs in this video, uh, just click the link in the description or up here on that card uh, and uh, sign up for them on becomebasis.com. Uh, with this, so uh, let's go note by note. This note, you're starting with two Ds, fifth fret on the A string, and then your big slide up to the twelfth fret on the A string, then F, tenth fret on the D string, and then finishing on D, twelfth fret on the D string, and sliding down from there. That's really the crux of this bass line. This is just so slick, so cool. I'm so happy this was my very first bass line. How singable is it? That is such a strong melody in and of itself. The next incredibly melodic bass line comes from the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. John Deacon from Queen. One of the most melodic bass players around. Very few people have such a good instinct for when to be busy, when to kind of lay it back, when to lay it down, and when to play something a little bit fancier. I could have picked tons of John Deacon bass lines uh, to put in this video, but the one we're looking at comes from the verse of Bicycle Race because it's just so cool. It goes like this. One, two, three, and... Oh my goodness, John Deacon, the man, the myth, the legend, indeed. Now, there are a bunch of variations to this bass line. Uh, my hunch, I don't know for sure, but my hunch is that uh, John Deacon kind of had the framework to work in and he improvised around that. The kind of framework is that first part, the... That's the same every time, and then the end of the phrase, uh, every phrase is different, but they all end up on this high A flat right here, 13th fret on the G string. So the first part is just A flat C, A flat, then B flat D, B flat. So sixth fret on the D string, then fifth fret on the G string, then back down, then eighth fret on the D string, sixth fret on the G string, and then back to the first note. That happens every time. It's just what happens afterwards is different. And I want to give you the first four different variations on the recording, because they're, they're iconic. They're really, really cool. So the first is just this. We have our little intro part, and then we get a flat, C, and then the high A flat. So sixth fret on the D string, fifth fret on the G, and then a big old slide up to this A flat 
on the 13th fret right here. So with the beginning, pretty cool, right? Now the next variation goes like this. We have that first little bit and then we have, so we have A flat, C, D flat, E flat, and then slide up to the A flat. That's sixth fret on the D string and then fifth, sixth, and eighth fret on the G string and then sliding up to the A flat. That's probably the trickiest one uh, in, out of all the variations just because of the, the sixteenths in there. Pardon me. But with a little bit of practice, not that difficult to get through. Um, that's probably my favorite one as well, I like that one. <laughs> the next variation goes like this. We have that first little part of the framework. And then we get like a continuation kind of thing. We get C flat, E flat, C flat, and then a slide up to the A flat from nowhere. Yeah, so we get 10th fret on the D string, 8th fret on the G string, then back down, and then slide up to the 13th fret from absolutely nowhere. And then the final one is all just on the uh, G string. We go C, E flat, A flat. So you get 5th, 8th, and 13th fret all, uh, all in a row there. Yeah? Put them all together and this is what you get. Then this goes into a verse. This is such a cool bass line though. There's this really cool interplay between the actual melody and this line. Uh, it's almost as though the bass line was written as kind of a counter melody to Freddie Mercury's vocals. I reckon if you stripped everything else away from this recording and just had the bass and the vocals, the essence of the song would still be there. It'd still be just as cool because of the strength of the melody and that amazing bass line. So, so cool. The final bass line comes from another bass playing legend, John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin. He's a bass player I listened to so much when I was growing up, because who doesn't love a bit of Led Zeppelin when they're like 14 year old boy? <laughs> Actually, I'm still into Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but the bass line I wanna share with you is a masterpiece of melodic bass playing, and it's from the song Ramble On. Check it out. One, two, three, four. <laughs> This is so cool, that's beautiful. Mm, what a bass line. Yeah, that little flourish at the end there? Man, that is incredible. So let's go over exactly how this is played. We're starting on this E right here, seventh fret on the A string, and then going straight up to this B, ninth fret on the D string. Then we get this. Yeah. Uh, e string, E hammering on to the F sharp, then coming back down and then to this C right here, and a bit of a slide. So that's 9th fret on the uh, G string, going up to the 11th fret, coming back down, and then the 11th fret on the D string, and then sliding down from there. So, so far... Yeah? So that's our first half. Then we go back down to our uh, E, 7th fret on the A string, and then we go up high and play a bunch of off beats. So we go... So we go G sharp, then F sharp, and then E on the G string. That's the 13th, 11th, and 9th frets on the G string. And then we go to the D string and play C sharp and B, the 11th and the 9th frets. And then we get this little wicked thing. Yeah, that's A, B, C sharp, and E, and then sliding down from C sharp. So that's the 7th, 9th, and 11th frets on the D string, then up to the 9th fret on the G string, and then sliding down from the 11th on the D string right there. Now as far as how that's actually played, the first note, the A of that little kind of flourish, that's definitely plucked, but the second note could uh, work as either a plucked note or a hammer-on. Yeah, so here it is if you pluck it. Yeah, or if you just hammer it on. And you know, either way works, and, if, uh, and either way you're kind of sliding from the uh, ninth to the 11th fret on the D string. So plucked or hammered, either way is great. 
So once again, that whole thing sounds like this. Two, three, four. Yeah, what a melody, right? Incredible. Okay, so what can we learn from all these bass lines? Well, first of all, they're completely singable. I'd argue that the bass line from the verse of Ramble On is more singable than the actual melody. If you ask me to sing like the, the Robert Plant part, I, I mean, I might be able to give you like an approximation, but definitely wouldn't be able to do it exactly. And even when you listen to live versions, Robert Plant sings it differently every time. That bass line though, it's super consistently singable. All the bass lines also have something I call breath points. This is part of what makes them singable, yeah? Each line either has spaces where nothing's being played at all, or there's a long note. Now these are important because number one, it gives the listener time to absorb what they've just heard. It's not just a constant stream of notes, you know? And uh, number two, if you are actually going to sing or hum these bass lines, you need literal points to breathe, yeah? If, if you're trying to sing an ACDC line, it just goes forever, you run out of breath, yeah? But come together, breath point, and there as well. We've got two right in there. This is over a long note. Even kind of there could potentially be a breath point as well. If you look at bicycle race, pretty much every time you get to that high A flat, there's a breath point right there. And ramble on, breath point, pardon me, there, there as well, breath point, oh, pardon me. Breath point, at it. pretty much every time we go back to, we get a long note, we get two long notes essentially, with that breath points right there, and then we get that long. We get this like long stream of notes that aren't really uh, breath points, and then we get, Nice big low note, feels really good. <sighs> yeah. So if you want to make your own bass lines more melodic, see where you can put in some places for the music to breathe. It'll make your lines more singable and definitely more melodic. Finally, each bass line we've talked about takes advantage of an interval that I think is the most melodic interval you can possibly use. If you can inject this interval into your bass lines, they'll instantly be more melodic and singable and just better bass lines in general. And I talk about this in this video right here. So if you want to start injecting melody into every bass line you play, then I will see you in that video right there. <laughs>